The O-Link Target Platform was designed to help scientists gain novel insights into disease processes, improve disease detection, and contribute to a better understanding of biology. Each of our well-established 96-plex panels for protein biomarker discovery provides assays for 92 different proteins that are focused on a specific disease area or important biological process. Our signature Q100 instrument is specifically designed for qPCR readout of all our target panels. The following instructional video illustrates the workflow for analysis of the target 96plex panel focusing on inflammation using human serum or plasma samples. O-link panels that target high abundant proteins require an additional sample preparation or dilution step. The inflammation panel run in this video does not require the extra dilution step. For information regarding the sample dilution requirement per panel, please refer to sample dilution guidelines prior to starting or contact O-link support at support at olink.com. Please read the manual before watching this instructional video. For more information on the target kit and how to order, visit the O-Link website. The O-Link target protocol consists of three core steps. The incubation step, the extension and amplification step, and the detection step. The target workflow takes place over two days, where on day one, samples undergo an immunoreaction. And on day two, samples are prepared for amplification and detection using qPCR. There are a few considerations to keep in mind before running O-Link kits. Always wear gloves and a lab coat to prevent contamination of assays and samples. Carry out pre- and post-PCR procedures in separate rooms if possible. Always pipette from the liquid surface. Keep all enzymes in freezing blocks during lab work and return them to the freezer after use. Perform all centrifugation steps at the suggested centrifugal speed and time specified. And always visually inspect that a correct and even volume is aspirated during each pipetting step. In some steps of the protocol, reverse pipetting should be used. Unlike for regular forward pipetting, before aspirating your liquid, push your plunger just past the first stop. Immerse your pipette tip into your liquid, just below the liquid surface. Slowly release your plunger all the way up. When dispensing your liquid, press down just until the first stop. A small volume will be left in your pipette tip. If using the same pipette tip to transfer your liquid to another well, keep your plunger pressed down to the first stop until you put the pipette tip back down in the liquid and slowly release your plunger all the way up. Repeat as necessary. The small volume left in your pipette tip can be discarded once the pipetting is done. Plate vortexing should be performed using the Eppendorf Mixmate and the appropriate tube holder. This is required for the pre-PCR plate vortexing, but optional post-PCR. If manual plate vortexing is used post-PCR, it must be done using the technique shown here. Please watch the O-Link Vortexing Technique video before continuing. It is also important that all samples, plates, and reagents except for enzymes are vortexed thoroughly and spun down before use or after the addition of any reagent, sample, or mix. We begin the Target 96 workflow by preparing the samples for the immunoreaction and then incubating them overnight. All lab work for day one will take place in the pre-PCR room. During the immunoreaction, antibody pairs with conjugated DNA tags are added to the samples and allowed to bind to the target proteins during an overnight incubation. Start by preparing your lab space with the necessary consumables and labware. Bring all reagents and controls, as well as the plate containing the samples, to room temperature before proceeding. Presented here are the required reagents and supplies for the incubation reaction. 
vortex the negative control, interplate control, and sample control, and spin them down briefly. Label an 8-well PCR strip with these controls according to the following order. Pipette 5 microliters of the sample controls into the first two wells. 5 microliters of the negative control into each of the next three wells. And 5 microliters of the interplate control into the final three wells of the PCR strip. Cover the strip tubes and set those aside. Vortex and spin down all reagents before making the incubation mix. Prepare the incubation mix by combining the incubation solution, incubation stabilizer, and A and B probes in a microcentrifuge tube, according to the volumes mentioned in the O-Link user manual. Vortex and spin down the incubation mix, and transfer 47 microliters into each well of a new 8-well PCR strip labeled as incubation mix. Label a new 96-well plate as incubation plate. Using a 10-microliter 8-multi-channel pipette, precondition your pipette tips by pipetting up and down a few times using incubation mix. Use the same pipette tips for the entire plate and transfer 3 microliters of the incubation mix into the incubation plate by reverse pipetting to the bottoms of each well. Vortex the samples and spin them down. Transfer 1 microliter of each sample to the bottom of each well of the incubation plate according to your sample plate layout, using a multi-channel pipette and forward pipetting. Make sure to change tips between the columns. Finally, Use the multi-channel pipette to transfer one microliter of negative control and interplate control from the prepared PCR control strip into the wells of column 12 of the incubation plate using forward pipetting. Seal the plate thoroughly with an adhesive plastic film and spin down. Incubate at plus four degrees Celsius for 16 to 22 hours. On day two, samples undergo the second part of the proximity extension assay, as well as the detection step using qPCR on our signature Q100 instrument. During the extension and amplification step, unique DNA reported sequences are generated and pre-amplified for each target protein using regular PCR. As for day one, it is important that all samples, plates, and reagents, except for enzymes, are vortexed thoroughly and spun down before use, or after the addition of any reagent, sample, or mix. Prepare your lab space with the labware and consumables needed for this step. For the extension and amplification reaction, you will need the following labware and reagents. Allow the PEA solution to reach room temperature and vortex and spin down before proceeding. Preheat the PCR machine by starting the extension program on your thermocycler and pause it once it reaches 50 degrees Celsius. Remove the incubation plate from the fridge and allow it to reach room temperature. Prepare the extension mix in a 15 milliliter tube according to O-Link user manual. Remember to keep the enzymes on a freezing block or on ice while in use. Return the PCR polymerase vial to the freezer until its use in the final detection step. Spin down the incubation plate and carefully remove the adhesive film. Vortex the extension mix and pour into a multi-channel pipette reservoir. Precondition 200 microliter multi-channel pipette tips using extension mix before proceeding. Use the same pipette tips for the entire plate. Start a timer set for 5 minutes and transfer 96 microliters of extension mix to the incubation plate using reverse pipetting. Seal the plate with a new adhesive plastic film and vortex thoroughly to ensure all wells are mixed before spinning it down for use in the next step. Check that all wells in the plate contain the same volume and note any deviations. 
This information is required to interpret the data during statistical analysis. Transfer the incubation plate to the PCR room. Place the plate in the PCR instrument and resume the PCR program after five minutes have passed. It is important to place the incubation plate in the PCR instrument exactly five minutes after addition of the extension mix. The PCR program takes approximately one hour and 30 minutes. Once the PCR program is finished, either continue with the detection step or store the extension products for up to one week at four degrees Celsius or up to four weeks at minus 20 degrees Celsius. The final step involves preparing samples for qPCR using Olink Signature Q100. This begins with priming the Target 96 IFC chip. Make sure the IFC is used within 24 hours of opening its package. Only use Olink control line fluid syringes that come with the Olink Target 96 IFCs. The control line fluid syringes are pre-filled according to the specific IFC type. Begin by unpacking the control line fluid syringes and the IFC from the box and foil envelope. Inspect the IFC for any visible damage and ensure that the barcode label is intact and that the chip surfaces are clear of particulates before use. Place the IFC on a flat surface and using a pipette tip, actuate the check valve in each accumulator with gentle pressure. Ensure that the poppet can move freely up and down in the valve. Make sure the IFC is tilted 45 degrees. Hold the syringe firmly in one hand with the tip facing up and away from the chip. Pull back on the plunger slightly to create negative pressure and remove the shipping cap with the other hand. Be careful when removing the control line fluid syringe cap to prevent drips. Insert the syringe into an accumulator. Press down gently to move the black O-ring to the side. Visually confirm that the O-ring has moved. Slowly inject the control line fluid into the IFC by pushing down on the plunger. Wait approximately five seconds before withdrawing the syringe. Ensure that all the control line fluid and air are purged from the syringe before removing the syringe from the accumulator to avoid dripping. Make sure that the O-ring has returned to its normal position after the syringe is removed. Repeat the same procedure on the other accumulator. Pull the protective film down and away from the bottom of the chip and discard. Now it is time for the IFC preparation step in the signature instrument. The signature instrument has a touchscreen. On the Start a New Run screen, select the Target 96 script. The shuttle drawer will now open and the Insert the Chip Containing Control Line Fluid screen will be displayed. Carefully place the IFC containing control line fluid and the Target 96 specific interface plate in the drawer. Align the notched corner of the chip to the notch on the shuttle drawer and face the barcoded edges of the chip and the interface plate forward. Tap Close Drawer on the screen. The shuttle drawer closes with the Ready to Start Chip Preparation screen on display. Click Start. Preparation begins and displays the preparing chip screen and the time remaining. During the priming of the IFC, prepare the detection mix using the following labware and reagents. The final detection step quantifies the DNA reporter sequences for each biomarker using high-throughput real-time qPCR. Thaw the primer plate. Remove the incubation plate containing the PCR product from the PCR instrument. Vortex and spin down the content. Thaw the detection solution and vortex and spin down the detection solution and primer plate. Bring out the detection enzyme and PCR polymerase and remember to place them on a freezing block and prepare the detection mix in a microcentrifuge tube according to Olink user manual. Vortex and spin down the detection mix before 
transferring 95 microliters of the mix to the bottom of each well of an eight well strip using reverse pipetting. Label a 96 well plate as sample plate. Precondition 10 microliter 8 multi channel pipette tips using detection mix and use the same tips throughout the plate. Transfer 7.2 microliters of the detection mix to each well of the sample plate by using reverse pipetting. Transfer 2.8 microliters of the PCR products in the incubation plate to the sample plate using a multi-channel pipette and forward pipetting, changing tips between each column. Seal both the sample plate and the incubation plate with adhesive plastic film. Vortex and spin down the sample plate before proceeding. The chip preparation is now complete, and the chip preparation complete screen is displayed. Tap the eject symbol to open the shuttle drawer and remove the interface plate and the IFC from the instrument. Tap Close Drawer. The shuttle drawer closes. The next step involves loading the primers and samples onto the Target 96 IFC. Using reverse pipetting, pipette 5 microliters of each primer into the respective primer inlets on the IFC on the left-hand side. Using reverse pipetting, pipette 5 microliters of each sample into the respective sample inlets on the IFC on the right-hand side. Carefully check for bubbles in both the wells for primers and samples before proceeding. If any bubbles are found, they should be removed using a syringe needle. Change needle between wells to avoid contamination. With the Insert the Chip Containing Samples screen on display, place the IFC in the drawer. Use clear tape to remove any dust particles or debris from the IFC surface if necessary. Place the interface plate over the IFC. Align the notched corner of the IFC with the notch on the drawer and face the barcoded edges of the IFC and interface plate forward. Close the shuttle drawer by tapping Close Drawer. The system scans the IFC and interface plate barcodes, then closes the drawer. On the Add Run Details screen, confirm the chip ID. Then enter a custom run name or run notes if desired and select the panel type. Tap Start Run. The run begins and the screen displays the time remaining. Tap Finish when the run is completed. Now you can analyze the exported data using the NPX Signature software. This concludes the Olink Target 96 workflow on the Olink Signature Q100 instrument. For further help and advice, Contact our knowledgeable support team at support at olink.com.